Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor crew and I'm super pumped to be introducing this brand new series we're about to kick off all around the three P's of plan produced profit. Now, the XY team spent a lot of time thinking about what makes a great financial advice offering, a great financial advice business. And what we distilled it down to was that there are three key elements that you need to get right to have any level of success in your financial planning business. The first is about planning and how to plan an epic service proposition that's engaging for the people that you want to work with and compelling to drive real results within your business. The second is about producing and that's about being efficient in your business, streamlining things, maximizing benefits of technology to uh, run a a scalable and uh, profitable advice service. And then the third is profit, which is all about getting your message out to a bigger market. How do you attract more people into this awesome offer that you're running efficiently and scalably? So I'm taking over over the next 15 episodes. We're going to have 15 advisors, going to be 100% advisors. I've had a bunch of fun with the recordings that I've done so far, the interviews, and, uh, and I've got a few more great ones to come. So I hope you enjoy this series. This episode is proudly sponsored by FE Analytics. Now, a number of XY advisors have already discovered this one-stop easy to use tool that helps with investment research, analysis, portfolio construction, ongoing monitoring, and client reporting. Find out how FE Analytics can help you improve your business process, manage your existing client base, and win new business by contacting Bruce Jenner via bruce.jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R, at financialexpress.net, or visit financialexpress.net for more information. Well, uh, mate, thank you for being here. Uh, This is the third part of a three-part series around um, the three P's of a successful financial planning business, which is all around um, plan, so creating a compelling service offer, produce, which is running your business efficiently, and profit, which is what we're talking about today, which is all about getting your message out to the masses. And over the last couple of weeks, we've had some uh, uh, sort of less traditional uh, people in this space talking about PR things and uh, podcasts and that sort of stuff. But I uh, really wanted to get you in to talk about doing partnerships with with the more traditional sort of partners in financial advice, uh, uh, accounting partners in your case, which I know you sort of uh, really closely aligned with. Um, to to get yeah, I, I suppose to uh, to see someone that's that's doing it well. So, um, mate, thanks for being here. Sure, thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, firstly, though, just a, 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 some metrics around uh, your business. So, Kelly Partners. Tell us about the business. So Kelly Partners is traditionally a uh, an accounting firm set up by Brett Kelly, and he started it about 12, 13 years ago now. His um, he realised that there was a huge gap between accountants doing the compliance work and actually business services stuff. So their their bread and butter is not just doing tax returns and, and stuff. It's actually providing value to their to their clients yep. on a, on a whole new level that um you know like a lot of us like to do in, in the financial advice space that and advisors that have been on this in the past so there's a lot of um synergies there when we went across and looked at how we can work with them and, and what we can do from a wealth perspective yeah how many accountants uh there's 40 partners across 13 offices wow so massive and yeah. then on the advice side so the advice business was created with an idea to partner with their accountants primarily primarily yes, yes. and so how many people in the advice side of the business uh, there's two of us, and then we've got three three staff and an offshore team that help us out on the um, on the deliveries side of thing. Right. Um, so Kelly Bond as well being a listed accounting company. Yep. Pretty unique model there, but working quite well, and it allows the um, allows the accountants to be partnered as like an owner driver model, where they can partner with an essentially in a services business that has the format down pat, and then they plug and play. On the accounting side. On the accounting side, yep. where they want to be. And we, we've come in as a subsidiary to that business uh-huh. to do a very similar sort of thing and provide services to those those accountants. Right. And uh, and so you've been at Kelly Partners for a year? Almost two years. Two years. Yeah. Shit, that time goes fast. It has it? probably 20 months now. 
Yeah, and how long before that? Because the other advisor that was there that was like the first one in yep. the business, so they started how long before you joined? About 12 months before I did. Right, yep. okay, nice. And uh, what sort of advice are you providing? We're, we're providing, so from an interesting point of view with, with our accountants is that they do more than the average accountant does. So in the traditional sense, we're, from the background I came in, my advice was you're, you're, you're that general practitioner, you come in yeah, and you're, you're telling the clients where they need to be, getting their estate plan sorted and everything like that. Yep. The accountants we're partnering with actually do that as well. Right. So they're, they're getting what is essentially called the flight plan in order mm-hmm. to, and giving all that service. That So we're really there to plug the gaps that they haven't done. Right. But then also out, going out to our clients to do the full holistic advice, but really mainly insurance investment and some planning, strategic planning stuff. Sure. So it's more that like, it's almost like the, uh, the flip side of, of a lot of uh, advice businesses where it's the advisor that's trying to control, like manage the estate planning and um, doing the project management with all the other bits and pieces. They're more so the accountants are doing that. And then you've got, you're doing this specific, the, yeah, the investment piece, the technical stuff, the, um, insurance side yes, of things yeah definitely. cool so uh what's the what's your ideal client we've spent a lot of time in the last little bit trying to trying to get this right the nature of the business being we've been very busy yeah trying to uh, get across the client get across what what type of clients there but we're finding that it is a uh, it, i shouldn't say older but it's a it's a more mature client than um than typically probably what you deal with or a lot of yeah, was out there, but it's not to say that um, the nature of what it is is that our um, our clients are business owners, and that's okay. that's Kelly Partners' sweet spot from an accounting sense. Yep. So we're finding those type of clients are, are attracted to what they offer as a service offering. So that that's who, that's who it is, and it's more established businesses looking to grow, uh-huh. looking to better their profit margins and all of that. Yep. And partnering with a good accountant that can do that sort of thing. Um, and by nature, that's where our clients are. So okay, and do, and do, with the account, given that you're doing the more, um, I suppose, filling that gap between the holistic piece that the the accountant's delivering. Do you work with clients? Is it more more transactional, or do you do you have clients that are on like ongoing retainers? Or no, we we only work on a fee for service ongoing basis. But what we've realised is that it actually allows us to do the parts we do really well. Uh huh. Um, there. There is not, not not to say it's a distraction to do the other stuff, but often you know clients the, the reason they come to you is is to, is for a purpose, and we can do that purpose, plug that gap, and we know some we've partnered with someone or set the structure up right, or have an accounting or, or an estate planner or, or mm. someone in there that's offering a service level similar to what you would want to offer your clients yeah, yourself, definitely, which which makes the job easier. Mm. And it means we can do our services really well. So yeah, fee for service, but doing exactly what. They, that the part we need to do. Okay, makes sense. I suppose that you uh, really like the clients that they sort of need that stuff done, and yeah, it's it's you, there's no point in having two captains in the ship, right? Like if you exactly. if you've got someone that's doing it, it is something that takes a, a lot of time as well. I find I know that in our business, um, you know, when you start going into the you know working with external providers and um, you know lawyers, uh, you can streamline things a bit, but it's it is sort of out of your hand. So. Um, yeah, but I, and I also think like you bang on about the that it's got to be aligned in t- terms of the service levels. Otherwise, those relationships just don't work, yeah. even if the clients are aligned as de- well. De- definitely, and from from our perspective, it's um we really we really do focus on 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 a high service level. That's what the Kelly Partners model has been built on. So we're trying to now understand how the wealth management piece, which hasn't been traditionally offered there fits into it and aligns with that so when you partner with these accountants and get the structuring right to like you say sort of one captain and, and you're working together it, it's it's a good fit from that perspective yeah for sure and so the idea with with the wealth management arm of the business was to to really uh you know fill the need for the for the partners in the accounting side and and to work with them over uh yeah closely closely to make sure that the clients are getting looked after also i'm I'm assuming sort of keeping them in the in the family uh as as well because the the more likely you know someone goes starts going talking to a whole bunch of other people then you can see that could get conflicting advice could end up with people leaving so i think a smart move uh from their perspective but tell us about so the last sort of couple of years that journey in 
um, specifically around how you've been partnering with, with the accountants and how that sort of evolved over that time period? Yeah, and for me, the, that journey actually started a little bit before I joined Kelly Partners. Um, the, the business I was involved in before, I know you know them quite well, Paul and Dean with um, at Absolute Wealth, and they were they, they partnered really well with accountants, and they had a good background knowledge on how to do some of the stuff that accountants do from a structuring and, and getting that piece right. So I learned that early on, that partnering and working with accountants was a really good way to grow your business and also understand and demonstrate knowledge on a whole different level not just insurance and investments at the end of the day yeah so going back to there that was my that was my grounding in in financial advice working with them and learning that dean then, dean did ask me to uh if you could share the story about how you got your biggest client <laughs> wow too soon <laughs> um too soon no actually I did, I did go to lunch with them the other day did you yeah i did right, who's you up <laughs> I think I paid maybe uh, uh, at the end, but um, so I think it's on them next. But we, it did take a good hour before the uh, before the joke and the elephant in the room was addressed. But it, it was all in, it was all very much in good in good faith. Of course, yes. Um, you know, and then it comes down to um, you know offering a good service, and that's and and I learned to, I learned a lot from them, and I was able yeah. to take that across with me. And that's it, and the relationship <laughs> with it, eh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, no, no. You so you've completely thrown me now. But th- that journey, and I was approached to come and uh, and help. So th- that background is exactly where my business partner Trent is. Um, he he came from the investment background, working for investment banks, doing structured investments, and all of that. Uh-huh. And he his knowledge and, and expertise in that is is what he brings to the table in our in our partnership and. The, the structuring and financial advice piece is how we work together on our clients. So, you know, they're, they're looking for that. Like I said, our clients are typically older, more mature clients, and they, they are sometimes looking for that gray hair um, advisor. Yeah. And there's just no way about that. Just don't that. have enough gray hairs yet. No, nah, there's, there's one coming out. I, I don't cut it out for that reason. But um, <laughs> it's it, we, we, we really allowed that to... Um, we work well together doing that. So going back to how we set the whole business up was went across and said look there's an opportunity yet to grow to grow a business and partner with accountants and and offer in that advice that ties in with what they do uh and we started must have been just over two years ago now i started that conversation and i joined there at the start of 2018 uh-huh. um, and realized very quickly that going across i went in thinking well, i was going to do what i've been doing being that, that that GP, the captain of the ship, directing and trying to get all that stuff done, but realized they had a really compelling service offering and that one we could build a really good advice business off of yep. to, to partner with and not try and be the key key player in the relationship was a bit different to what to what we'd been used to. Yeah. Like coming out of it, we, we you know, a lot of a lot of um, clients had an accountant that just did the tax at the end of the day and didn't mm. didn't really do some forward planning thinking. Um, so yeah, the big key for me was was how do you partner with your partner? It's not just someone that's going to refer your business at the end of the day. Yeah, it's it's where do they sit and how do you structure that relationship is actually just as important as whether you're giving each other business. Yeah, and so like obviously you guys are aligned in that you're you're associated with the accounting business, so that there's a there is a, a pretty firm sort of linkage there. But I think that the you know like you say that the building the relationships and partnerships with these. Uh, with the accountants or any any provider is uh you know it's it's sort of consist it's still it's, it's not necessarily something that will just happen on its own so what are, you know i suppose what's the progression been in terms of like the learnings in the last couple of years is did it all just happen straight away or um or i know that from some of the chats we had before that there was a bit of sort of evolution in figuring it out how to make it easy to partner with these with the with the um, the accountants and and make that work. Yeah, well, the thing, the biggest biggest learning I can look back now and go is learning how different people work with their clients and being able to match that mm-hmm. um, and find what finding what your ideal sort of service level is and and partnering with people that align with that because if you don't meet if you you set up a structure or you you become aligned with someone that you work really closely with them and a lot of clients if you just work with one or two 
it's probably not going to come out as re- as prevalently as what it came out for us where we were working with three, four at a time. Yeah. Um, and meeting those same expectations because we're now not the key relationship holder, which we've been in the past. So the key, yeah. everything gets fed back to that. So, ha- so setting up a really similar understanding how that person works mm-hmm. and working, not changing t- just to do it, but actually having a very similar sort of structuring in place as to how you get back to clients how you do that meant that as soon as we got synergies and we're able to align that we were able to work so much better and quicker with the clients that we wanted to work with uh-huh. and the, the process was smoother and we were able and every you know the, the journey was a lot quicker for everyone and, and better uh-huh so and do you do, do you work the same way with all of the accountants or do you is it is it sort of horses for courses or no well it's be, it, it used to be I thought that one way it would work for everyone. Yeah. But um, what we're realizing is there's, there's essentially, we're, we're based in 13 locations currently. We, we've just gone into Melbourne, but that's that's a separate one. But around New South Wales, from Central Coast to Wollongong to Oran Park and Campbelltown. Like we've right. got a number of offices around and, and your clients are different. Yeah. The ones, you know, you're... you're from a, from a servicing perspective, they, they expect different outcomes, they expect different. So we had to, we, we almost had to tailor it per office and try to set our business and get our business working to be able to service the offices. So our, our, cli- our first client is actually the other partners in the business. Yes. Um, because we're f- there to help them service their clients' needs. Yeah, for sure. Not, so it, it's a bit of a, um, you almost have to cut your own ego out of it to think you're not... Not, not 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 the most important person in the relationship, but you you're not. You have to take the back seat and and just plug a gap. Yeah. Not drive not drive the process. Which yeah. When that's been the way you've taught and in the way you've liked to work with your clients mm. in the past, I can imagine it would be a whole. It's a whole different process. Yes. And that might not be the way because our structure of our business is quite unique. So it might not be the way for everyone. But I think if someone was trying to go partner more closely with an accountant, it's actually setting that expectation on who's doing what yep clearly and in, in so the client knows as well yes not because sometimes what you would have if, if if you didn't do that or we didn't do that at the start was a client would be asking the accountant a question that should be asking over here and then it's mm. who's doing it or who's not doing it and and because they hold the key mm. it's always going to be interesting the, the most the person that holds the key to the relationship is always going to be the one getting the feedback not necessarily both of you yes so it's a, it's an it's an interesting process um, yeah. that we've gone through and we're, we're now 18 months down the track of, of this yep and starting to figure out how we can scale that without losing as much time um, traveling and, and all of that yep which is which is it's a good problem to have but the, the travel costs our clients absolutely because yeah it's you, you you can only do so much driving three hours in a day four hours in a day to, to service someone and so we're trying to figure out how we close that that gap at the moment where and you know we, you've done a ton of stuff where you've done stuff online and all of that yeah that's not this we, we tried that but that's not the service expectation yes. that the client has yeah so we have to now plug that gap another way mm. so we're, we're getting right into that side of things from our business perspective it's interesting. I think, uh, yeah, you know, you, you often think when you're doing advice work, you, you're ultimately you're working, you're working for the client. But I think if you want to go all in, like you guys are in the in the partnership space, that it's really the 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 accountant, the partner is your is essentially your client yep. um, first. So an interesting learning, and it's really that it's it's you say that it's like your. Um, you put your ego to side, but it's really you just work. It's like you, if you're working with a client, you like with an end with an end consumer that you're you're figuring out what how they want to be worked with, and then matching that. And it's exactly the same with the with the accountant as well. So now, so because there are there are forty partners, and you've been there for a couple of years. I imagine you sort of hit most of them. But how do you approach building a a relationship with the with the partners that are in there over time is it something that you do because it obviously it takes time to to do these to 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 build that relationship but did you just sort of go meet everybody or did you tend to focus in on uh you know fo- trying to f- try to focus in on it on one or a few businesses at a time then and then roll that out amongst others or how did you actually tackle that because it seems like if you got 40 sort of potential partners there uh great great position to be in but how do you how do you actually, uh, yeah, tackle that? A lot harder than, than I thought. 
um, <laughs> I went in a bit naively thinking everyone is um, everyone's excited and, and, and is your friend and, and, and everyone's been great as a as getting you on board sort of thing but it's exactly right you're not just like every time you get a potential client through the door and you can see that the relationships are they going to be a great one they want help they want they want to partner with you, you want to do things and then other ones that might walk through the door and go yeah they don't like the fee or they don't like this and you can see mm. it's going to be up your battle from the start and you can't be all things to all people so the yeah. quicker you learn that the better but at the same time we're in this position where we think you know trent has been more suited to some partners than i am sure um and and we've sort of tried to play that off a little bit as well to go right at the end of the day we we can between us we can do what the client needs um but if if the if our client is ultimately the partner in the business and how do we work with them to grow their business grow their stuff then who's going to be best suited to do that and we've and that's how we've we've been doing it yeah. um because you, you're never going to be you know put yourself in a room with 40 people you're never going to be everyone's favorite all the time you, mm. different personalities and different ways of working yeah and then mix that all together it's been very interesting learning so how do we we learned at the highway first couple of times where you know we, we just things weren't happening as quickly with certain partners and then we went out and saw them sat down and went you yeah, know well, what what can we do what can we do to help you grow the business and one of the things is that oh you know, this is that this was our expectation of how the service would work and this is what you're doing and it's not it's not necessarily that the outcome was going to be any different it just didn't meet their expectations just like in a client relationship yes um so the biggest learning is that you've got to treat your business partners or yeah, you know, in this in or you know referral partners or people that are going to help you grow your business and you're going to help them grow theirs is as as business as clients at the end of the day because yep. you can um you, you will learn very quickly that the more you work together and the more you you, you like each other yeah. and, and can relate to each other and, and deliver on a client's expectations the same, the more business you'll do together and the, and the quicker you, that relationship will, will flourish and grow. Sure. And do you now, like when you're, when you're tackling things, I suppose, are, there still, are you still in the process of building relationships? Is that something that you would do as, as part of that? Or if they're bringing on new people, is it about having that conversation around what the expectations are i'm just wondering like you know what do you think for someone that's out there that's looking to you know partner they get if they meet a, a good accountant or a broker or whatever what do you you know what do you take out of the the learnings from the last couple of years in terms of the best way to i suppose get clear on what like set things up for success essentially well we sat down in our business and went well what can we do how is it how can we smooth how can we make the process better and it comes down to having a good process and going at the end of the day if you meet a new accountant out there and this is we're, we're still doing stuff externally as well a uh-huh. bit harder because people know that at the end of the day we're attached to an accounting business <laughs> but it, we're still trying that and we, they might be referring to someone else at the moment they might be partnering with someone else but it could be a really good person or it could be a not so good person that, they, yeah. that they're working with and you just got to ask them just like you would ask a client that walked to the door that had a current advisor and what are you not getting? Why are you sitting? Why are you sitting at the table? Yeah. Having this discussion. What what's not what service or what needs are not being met? Yes. And how how can you sort of improve that process? Because then the day you both have a common goal, and that's the client's best interests and needs, and that's that yeah. that's that is the part that really works well for us on on both mm-hmm. sides. We have the accounting and us that are working on, on similar clients with similar interests at heart. And yep. it makes it a, it makes the whole process very smooth. Yeah, nice. And so, how do you actually work with the accountants? Is it because I know that there's a so Kelly Partners have a they they're part owner in the in the wealth part of the business. But in terms of with the actual partners, how does that work? Do you pay a, a like a, a, a is it like a fee split thing or um, how does the financial sort of side of the, the partnerships work? So we're, we're a completely separate balance sheet, completely separate business. Yep. Um, so they refer to us because they will we can service the clients the same as them. Right. So we not all so from from a structuring point of view, Kelly Partners listed company, some of those partners may have shares. Mm-hmm. Well, they probably do have shares in in the listed company. So they could probably see the the value in growing that business and and growing the listed company. Uh huh. Um, but no no other arrangement besides the fact that we are purely working 
together with a mutual thing. So that they refer okay. to our business just as though if we came across someone that needed a good accountant, yep. we would then we would send that person across to them because, or, or where it was suited, based on location probably. Yeah. And also to do that. So okay, that makes sense. That's exactly exactly how we do it uh, at Pivot as well. That it's just we we keep the financials out of it and just make sure we refer. We've got a couple of really good mortgage brokers that we know that they're going to look after the clients. Um, accountants are actually much more difficult to find, uh, although most of our clients are not business owners. Well, we're getting more and more, but most, predominantly they're, they're individuals, which most accountants don't don't particularly want to work with or are not profitable for the accountants, which sort of makes sense. But uh, yeah, that 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 uh, you know, we're happy to refer that stuff out because we know that they're going to get looked after the way that we want them to to get the right advice, and also that it makes your job easier as well. That you're uh, you know you're not having to. Um, fix problems when they, people get shit service or yep. shit advice, and then they, um, they, they you know, they, they sort of blow, they blow things up. Um, yeah. So, th- and that's we we figured that was really important from our clients' perspective is to see that they were the reason they were getting referred to the wealth business was because we were going to give them a similar service expectation as to what they were were getting from the account because they they hold the partnership, they hold the client's relationship. First and foremost, yeah. So we, we start to work in there, and if we don't meet those expectations, we're not. It, it's really important for us. So, because if we don't meet it, and the client, and that breaks the accountant's relationship down with their client, we don't have a business. We don't have a business model. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and, and it also makes sense that you know the people like the the accountants by using you, they know that they're sort of protecting their relationship because you're not going to take that person and then go and refer them to a different accountant. You're going to be supporting and if you're partnered together, then you guys can together work, you know, with with the client, but supporting each other, supporting the client um, would make for more longevity of those relationships as well, I'd I'd imagine too. Um, So cool, man. So uh, thinking about like the the last couple of years and the and and the journey that you've been on what when you and 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 specifically around the the working with these partners, what do you is there anything that you thought you were really certain was going to work well, and then it and then it was a flop? Yeah, go, go. Well, not not so much a flop, but thinking that it was just going to be smooth sailing and working things would work the way they worked in the past. Um, and so going from working for someone else and, and or a you know, small cell phone business to a relatively small, when I say say yeah. that, it's a, um, or to working for yourself. Mm-hmm. So many things that you, that you take for granted on a day-to-day basis that just happened. Yes, like um, email signatures. Like, like, like email signatures, man. <laughs> The ones that change five times. Um, Isn't it true that you, um, you've you had 14 different job titles since you started in the last I, two years? I've had five. <laughs> well, and that's all come down to getting the right... It's to the get, paradox of choice, isn't it, Shane? Yeah, well, <laughs> unfortunately, that, that part of it is, is, less, is, is less chosen as, as a part of the, the actual day-to-day delivery <laughs> of stuff. There is certain stuff that is, that is driven by corporate and... I, Dare say that part will be edited out, Ben. Right. Okay. Hopefully, we actually don't edit. Um, <laughs> oh, we can if you want. No, no. The um, but but it, it and, and that's the part we, we were we were trying to. It's actually th- that joke is is more serious because we went in trying to think this. We, we would just do business one way, and it's the way we saw it. But the way we saw it wasn't what the the expectation on each of the partners was, or each of the processes yeah. was. So we had to then um, reinvent reinvent it a million times to get it right as to yeah. what the offering was because we couldn't we, we wanted to go in and be a holistic, holistic full service offering mm. but when you have clients that are getting that and they feel like they're getting charged for the same thing twice yes then w- what are you actually doing so we, we we had to we had to try and get it right so the client knew who we were and what we were getting mm. um, or what we were giving them and what they were getting from us and what they were getting from their accounting partner yeah so we, we've had to get that right over time. So we went in with it, trying to be a full service business. In terms of the, the, the service model you're talking service about. Service model, yeah. 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 Um, and that was a complete flop because we couldn't get that right to internal, to current clients because right. they were already getting that. Yes. And, and we needed to understand more of the, the process that was currently there. Yes. 
to get right. So once and then once we got right as to what we needed to do and how we assisted the partners in what yeah. they were doing, uh huh, um, it made sense. Right. And then and and that it ran so much more smoothly from that mm-hmm. point of view than it did from just trying to be this is what it is. Right. Take it or leave it. Okay. So you actually tweaked the the service model based on the expectations of you know what the what was needed to work well with the with the clients of the yeah. of the accounts as well. Cool. And so uh, how did you go about that and and where did it land? Was it more just in ter- in terms of the communications with with clients? Because I suppose it does make sense that the, you know you go in with the standard like I'm gonna I'm gonna be your go to for advice. It wouldn't make sense. Like I could see where you get pushed back for people going, "Well, what? I'm paying him already for that and this for that." Yeah. But but the interesting part, the whole interesting thing that we did that came out of this was we actually, if we to enable to service the client, one of the things I think used to happen is that you wanted to be full service. Two reasons: because yeah, you could justify the fees and and the process that you were taking the client on. But if they came in with with all, most of that already done, and they but the 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 accountant can't give advice on investments or insurance or, or technical strategy yeah, stuff yeah the technical strategy stuff um, then I could, we could still have the same service offering, just do less and deliver better on that stuff. Sure. Um, because you know, no one comes to a financial advisor to expect to have their estate plan reviewed or. All of that stuff. Some people may, but but generally, I always I always used to find it mm. was quite. They were quite shocked as to the amount of stuff we actually covered off. Yes. Whereas these, in our process, it's being done. So it's we're coming with a really a client that's got a really good solid foundation, uh-huh. and just needs these gaps filled. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And so and has that then evolved further? So it's I suppose it sounds like you're positioned as just the that it's the you you're filling those those gaps as opposed to in the big picture thing and is that does that flow through i suppose that with communications with the partners and then into, yeah and and the, the the evolution from there is we now we're now at a size or, or f- where we've grown to as a business to go how do we take this to the next level now how do mm. we help the accountants grow their business grow ours and, and actually work together and w- what we're hoping to try and do is actually be more or, or grow the business into a position where we can have the right people in the right areas servicing not only Kelly Bonner's clients but also growing going out and, and growing the, the, the wealth business from that perspective uh-huh. but also by doing that they, they will, we will bring in clients that aren't Kelly Bonner's clients yeah back and into the accounting exactly and we can um, so, so now we're starting to think now we have to have both and how do we start to transition that into a business that we started there ended up with just plugging gaps and now trying to also then off so partnering with the right people and just getting the communication right yeah um, on, on that side of things nice and so then on the other side of that uh, the previous question is there anything that's worked really well that you weren't expecting no because I wasn't sure what in, in the honest I wasn't sure what to <laughs> expect going into you know running your own business going from employee on I finished up at my last job on a Friday and started at a new job on the Monday, yeah. um, and yeah, just so so. No, I, I don't think I had much time to think about what to expect or what was on the other side. Um, but the, the the biggest and the best thing to come out of the business we're setting up is how to work well with the po- people you're partnered with, mm. and very you know unique position on how we're partnering with accounting firms. But I think. Th- I've actually noticed, I think there's a lot of financial advisors out there that are setting up joint ventures or doing stuff with accountants because A, they realize that the accountants and good accountants will, ha- will hold the key to a client relationship for a little while mm. and you can you can become as important or set up the right business by partnering with that and that comes back to that getting the service expectations right. If you're going yep. to do something like that, you, you have to work the same because if if you don't on whichever way you you underperform a little bit you know it's going to it's not going to be good for the accounting relationship and it's not going to be good for them and they're going to stop yep. pushing people into that business for you mm. the other way, other side of it if you're i'm not going to say over servicing but if you're doing one thing and and the, the accountant or the other person that you're you're partnering with feels yeah. threatened in that relationship 
you could also have a you could also have a potential problem there. So getting get setting that service expectation up front, right? Yeah. And and, and someone that's going to progress along with you mm. would be key. Yeah. Not someone that potentially is um is thinking of of exiting or something like that because it's going to be hard to set up a compelling growth business offering yeah with someone that's potentially exiting out of, out of the business mm. in, in a couple of years yeah it's interesting the uh i've referred my when i get someone that's really complicated that's not fee sensitive i refer them to my accountant who's at who's at rsm but uh we've done a couple of joint meetings and uh they don't the, i remember the the first one it was i can't remember what it was specifically but uh, oh it was something about a self-managed super fund and then um and it was a it was a fair it was a it was a simple ish answer, but it was one that I didn't know the answer to, and the accountant didn't say anything. And then after the meeting, and then he said, "Oh, he goes, oh that was that." He goes, "But I didn't say anything because I wasn't sure if you wanted to, you know, be in control of that that sort of thing." And it just seemed like such a weird thing. I was like, "Man, if you knew, you should have just said it." Like I'm not there going, "I'm an expert about accounting," but I think that it, maybe maybe it's more on the accounting side that they're very. Well, that gave me the impression, at least, that they're very uh, that a lot of accountants can be quite con- controlling in terms of they don't want you to step on anyone's toes, but to be to 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 say stuff that they should be if they're if they're the trusted advisor that you shouldn't be sort of um, giving answers that w- that would be answers that the the client would typically go to directly to the accountant for. I, I've found that as well in working with external accountants. The 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 thing with in, in our business that we've been fortunate with it's never like no one no one cares there's no egos at the door and we do a lot of joint meetings jo- yeah. joint meetings for clients I've never met a client that feels that oh they're getting because both on the accounting side and, and our wealth side fixed fee and that's what it is so when they've got two people in the room then I feel like they're just racking up fees or anything like that Yes, they actually feel like they're getting a good perspective on both and we've had this discussion with a number of the partners where it's just we talk about it before but mm. going in if there's something that comes up voice it and it it gives you an opportunity to talk about that live and not this so there's essentially just like i said no egos which is which is really important but also our unique situation is because each of the partners in our business sort of started and grew their own businesses no one's going to say that because they value their client they've worked and grown that client and they've had to go out and source that client themselves yes they haven't come to them from a um you know, some people do come across from a brand perspective but at the end of the day where the, the nature of where we sit in in locations like I mentioned before Campbelltown, Oran Park, Penrith all of those places yeah they've actually literally had to prospect those businesses around there to know that they're there and what they offer sure and what sets them apart from the person next door so we um Clients, I found, are always more open for a very robust discussion, and yeah. there's no, no one cares who comes up with the idea. It's just about the okay. outcome for us. Just RSM, then, I suppose. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> could be, uh, mate. So, like, I think so. Your business is your pretty much all of your clients are really coming from the from the accounting side of the business. Is that right? We're about sixty percent from the accounting side, forty percent from our own networks. Okay, cool. And so, because I think like. There's a lot of people that that are trying to like a lot of advisors that they get the idea. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll you know build some relationships with the, with accountants, but then they sort of do it a bit um, maybe half assed is the wrong word, but but they they're not not consistent. They they're not in control of like the you know getting the the levels of business and consistency that they want. Where do you think like for, clearly you guys are doing it really well. Where do you think that people go wrong when they try to enter, try to build these sorts of partnerships and relationships? Is not treating it like a client relationship. You wouldn't sit there and let your client and not hear from your client, not contact your client for twelve months, and expect that they just then pay your fee when you send them an invoice, for example, if that's how you work. You you really have to actually sometimes just go out and catch up and and sit there with them and talk about what that what they've got on in their business, what you're doing. Um, and 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 make the meeting about them, not about the tw- the twelve clients they referred you or or the potential clients that that could be referred. That sometimes should just be the back end of the meeting. It should just be about what's going on for them, tr- nurture the relationship on an ongoing basis, not um not just wait for them to send another client along or you just send one along to them. Um, you've really got to grow that and 
end of the day you do business with people you like with you you, you like and yep. you like to work with so if you if you catch up and you know who they are what what the family is doing the kids are you know and, and actually take a genuine interest in that mm. and and work closely with them on all of that stuff then that will that will grow that relationship more than anything yes so we we, we went in doing that and we know like what we did was we we have catch up regularly with with our accounting partners sure and it's not just about clients okay and so you, you've got your because you've got a lot of a lot of you know client partners here right so how do you actually manage that is it do you do it ad hoc is it do you systemize things is it recurring i'd love to say it's systemized and give you the, the, the <laughs> fluffy answer but it's not it's yeah. it's ad hoc but yeah. it's it, it it's on a um I would say a fairly consistent basis, but it's it's plugging it in. Um, we we we're, we'd love to have all systems and processes in place, and we're getting to the part now where we need that. Yeah. Um, it's just been it's it's been really hand to mouth for our business at the pro, at the moment, understanding what what the needs are growing and, and learning evolving. how we're yeah, yeah evolving from what we've from what we thought to where we are, and also how we go forward. So yeah, th- that's the next step is how do we systemize all that? How do we actually have the right people partnering with the right partners if we're going to grow the business? Yeah. A- and we can't grow it any further without having the right systems in, in, in place. Sure. So. And how, so how do you go about keep like keeping the, nurturing those relationships over time? Is it mainly just going out, just, just regular catch-ups? Is there other spending stuff? Time, spending time. Yeah. If, it's, if it is as simple as a regular coffee catch-up in the diary, um, or or spending a day in the office. Now we have that that luxury, but I I think if um if you spoke to most accountants and said, look, you know, could I spe- could we work together? Or if you, if you especially if you are doing a lot of stuff together, it's probably not week one and a b- yeah. bunch of random people just going, yeah, sure, pull up in my office. Yeah. Um, but if you if you do have a close relationship and you work on a lot of clients together, sometimes just being in the office and and giving something to them and saying, look, I'll put on a lunchtime event for your for your staff and just run them through you know the, the Ben Nash slideshow that <laughs> I've buckets. got copies of yeah <laughs> um, no it's and, and doing stuff like that because then, then they see how you how you how you deal on a day to day basis with things and you, you can really nail down that relationship and obviously again we're, we're fortunate to be able to do that yes um, but I think people would be more open to it than if you don't ask you won't know that's it yeah for sure um, we've I have done that with one of the estate planners that we um, she said look I've got a couple of clients I know I'd like you to meet did it and I said look well, and, and did vice versa and I just went and sat in her office for the day sat there with her she, she got to see a little bit and she was open to it and, and as such out of that and we sat in each one of those initial meetings together both ways and both clients came on for us and both clients came on for her. That process of being able to work together and how you can do it better is so key to grow, to, to having a, a good relationship with your referring partners and if it's an accounting or, or estate planners or anything. Yeah, love it. And uh, so if you say you could go back to the start, uh, to, you know, to start, of, start of last year when you, when you started in the business, what, is there anything you would, you would do differently? I would try and be more open-minded than i was at the no. start right yes go on <laughs> what do you mean no not that's not like you to not be open-minded Shano. harsh 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 harsh, harsh. <laughs> wow um no it's uh to to realize that there's more than one way to to do things and if you go if you're too rigid when you want to set up a business set up and you start any new process or any new relationship with someone working down that you you there's not you'll never get it right because you know, it'd be all lovely to say look this is what this is the offering take it or leave it but yes. um, yeah o- open mindedness and a bit of flexibility as to what needed to be created versus what we wanted to create mm. and finding the median and going okay cool that's 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 where we need to be and and, and actually then having the courage to, to to change and go down that path sure because when you're going to when you set up Set you open up your mind to do one thing, and that's where you think you're going. And you have to change. It's it's an interesting process. Um, 
Yeah. Well, it's definitely that's something that's coming across that it sounds like you, you know, you, you've got the, there's a big opportunity there when, when you, you know, fr- essentially from day one, but it sounds like that the pivots that have happened is, you know, cr- really tweaking that offer and that's what's led to the, um, the success. So I suppose it's, it's, a, it's something that, yeah, that, that, that I th- it sounds like is, is highly beneficial is to make sure that you're, you, you're, yeah, o- like open minded, but you're n- ready to be able to, um, to change direction to work, you know, to create a, a solution that works for the client partner and the and ultimately definitely, the, the and that doesn't mean you have to change the way your internal processes of what you do. And and initially, it was too hard to to make that connection. Yes. Um, you, you think changing how you're going to offer or what 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 role you have in the relationship means changing everything you do? It doesn't. You can still run your business and have the processes and service clients the way you want to. You just have to do it with another party in mind. So um, changing doesn't mean and, and being flexible and open to the relationships you create with your partners or your, your um, referral partners doesn't mean changing the way you have to do things on a day-to-day basis yeah. for your business. And the sooner you can make that connection when, you, when you're bringing in outside parties that aren't your business, aren't in your control, so to say, yeah. is, is key mad i love it so you, you've got your thing but it's really the positioning and how how the people are, are making you perceiving perceiving what you do essentially yeah definitely love it shano mate some solid tips there uh i could uh, i could keep picking your brain all day and maybe i will uh, uh once we get off air but a couple of quick ones before we wrap what's been your biggest um stuff up or oops moment Learning to, uh, ooh, I'd have to say that um, it's client setting client expectations and keeping to those mm-hmm. when you set them one way and someone else sets them another, and you ha- or in the in this case, there is a there is a service expectation that all partners and Kelly partners have, and no, and it, it's more that you have to when you're working with partner on there and how they work with clients or someone else or whatever external partner it is you have to understand that to get it right and not your own because no matter what yours is it, it has to line up with that yep. so sure. cool not not doing that effectively quick enough right good and uh what's the uh what's the best piece of advice you've ever received do exactly what you're going to say you're going to do right and so and and just get back to a client you know the amount of clients we take on we say we're gonna do that you do it you don't the amount of clients that that say or get a call and say wow you called us back is is huge and so there's there is a huge lack of service Mm. out in the market so if if you're going to say something you just get back to clients and you show them what you can do that's that's the biggest thing i've learned yeah my business coach says that tr- trust is built when you consistently do what you say you're going to do and yep. lost immediately when you don't yep um but i'd say that that's probably why your accounting partners are uh, standing out in the market because i've found that historically all accountants are really shit at doing that like they just don't follow through like follow up follow through communicate like you know the it's like you send a referral to an accountant and it's just go it's like it goes into the void or you send a question and it's just like into this big black nothing and then just at random times at some point in the future something will come back out of the void and and that's that's a really interesting thing you say that because even you know i i I like to keep my inbox running at zero i get back to emails within 24 hours but that sometimes wasn't quick enough in terms of these if these guys can't get back to you they'll clear that they will call the same day they will do everything yeah. and even if that's at seven o'clock i realize that and and that's the expectation they set with their clients um and you've got to, we've got to match that so seven o'clock phone call returning at 8 a.m the next day is 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 okay but that person might have called that night and said so so just matching on those expectations yeah. otherwise you, you you fall further down the line so and that that's an extreme example that's not an everyone but yeah it's definitely like you say and important yeah Cool. Last question. What's your spirit animal? I'm gonna have to say a dog. Dog. Yeah. Right. You want me to elaborate on that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I think it's um, I think in this process and journey that we've gone on from, 
employee to to business owner and 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 then having so many stakeholders in, in a new business from day one was 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 being yeah being like a dog at the park right you just you want to go and play and see everything and <laughs> and um and chase every ball and, and not let everything down and then but you sometimes you, you can't you have to uh you have to sit back and just take it in a little bit before you do it so but i was definitely and i'm still that puppy sort of training into uh just to not to chase all balls. not not just geez well wow, we've gone there already um yeah not chasing all the balls i'd say <laughs> Very good. Well, <laughs> Mr. Hay, on that note, I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, mate. Thanks, mate.